Welcome into another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. I am the Fat Guy. Most people just call me Brett. Thanks for listening today. We're going to be talking about the uh, best fruits, really the only fruits you can eat on a ketogenic diet, uh, what their limitations are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are some fruits you can eat. Some of them are going to surprise m- probably most of you, um, simply because they're non-conventional fruits. So we'll get to that in just a second. First, the disclaimer: I'm not a doctor. I have no formal medical training. Nothing I say is intended to be specific medical advice for you. These are simply my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm also not giving you direct and personal dietary or diet advice. Uh, this is, again, my opinions and my personal experiences and my ideas based on my many, many hours of research. Before you uh, make any medical or diet decisions, you should always consult with a doctor. Follow us on social media, Fat Guy Podcast is a username. You can find us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at that same username, Fat Guy Podcast. And uh, I would love to have you join me there. So here we go. Fruits. What's the deal on fruits? It's very hard to eat fruits on a ketogenic diet. Even if you don't really know that much about a ketogenic diet, um, I think most people understand relatively quickly that you're just not going to be able to eat much fruit because it's sugar. Uh, This kind of flies in the face of conventional dietary wisdom, which is what? Eat your fruits and vegetables. Your fruits and vegetables. Interesting side note on that, which I won't get too deep in the weeds on this, but we'll talk about it momentarily because I find that part of the problem of getting people to embrace a ketogenic diet or a low-carb diet, either one, is all this bad advice we've been given over the years. Eat Eat your fruits and vegetables. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Um... At some point in time, and um, I've tried to track it down, and I can't figure out exactly when it started happening, but I think it was around the 70s, um, the uh, term fruits and vegetables replaced vegetables. (laughs) And uh, look, kudos to the Fruit Growers Association of America or whoever managed to make that happen. Um, But before that time, typically a healthy meal was considered to be protein, a healthy protein, which would be your meats and your vegetables. And then fruit was a treat. You know, you would have uh, uh, you'd have some, you know, you'd have uh, watermelon once or twice during the summer. You know, it's about the only time you'd have watermelon. You'd have uh, you know a banana every now and then. You might have some strawberries every now. It, It wasn't. Now they say, I think the number is six, six or seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And they're not even specific. Like if if they were to say you need six servings of vegetables and one serving of fruit a day, at least that'd be better. But they just lump it all in together. So basically, you know, technically the way to describe it, if you had six or seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day, you could have six servings of fruit and one serving of vegetable. Nevertheless, either way, it's too much fruit. Eating fruit every day is probably too much fruit unless you're really metabolically healthy and i'm guessing since you're listening to this podcast you're probably not metabolically healthy Uh, otherwise you wouldn't be concerned with a ketogenic diet weight loss or what fruits you can eat so i just wanted to get that out of the way right off the bat so does that mean you're doomed to never eat fruits well um look i always think that if you treat things the way common sense and and science would dictate that you can pretty much accommodate anything. Um, I'm going to give you an example before I get to these exact fruits. This is an example of accommodating anything. Before I went keto, I was vegan. And one of my favorite things to eat was watermelon. And every, I won't say every morning, 90% of my mornings, my breakfast was two, two and a half, three pounds of watermelon. That's how much I loved watermelon. Um, I look back on that now and I'm like, holy crap, you were starting your day shooting your insulin and uh, blood sugars through the roof. Nevertheless, since I've gone keto, I've had watermelon twice. And I went to where, um, I don't know about other stores, but I know Publix always has fresh cut. Or I don't know if it's fresh, but it's, you know, it's raw cut watermelon in little bitty bowls. And on two occasions since I've gone keto, which has been a year and a half now, I've been keto actually more than a year and a half, uh, you know, a year and eight months, I have gone to uh, Publix and bought that very tiny, smallest container of uh, uh, the little tiny bowl of cut cucumber they had and brought it home. One time I ate the whole bowl, 
The other time, I only ate like three quarters of the bowl and just threw the rest of it away because I, the first time I did it, I monitored my blood sugar. <laughs> I'm like, never again. So this time I ate much less of it. But look, so I've had watermelon. I've only had it twice in the last, you know, year and eight months, but I have had it twice. So I want to put it into context that if something's really important to you, you can figure out a way to work it into your life, but you don't have to eat it every day. You don't have to eat it every week. You don't even have to eat it every month. And as I've proven, you don't even have to eat it every six months. My average now on watermelon is less than one time every six months. (laughs) Um, So... Back to a more practical approach to fruit. A lot of people are like, well, I just don't think I can get good nutrition without eating fruits. And so let's talk about that. First of all, you can. And so I wouldn't worry about working fruits in for nutrition. That's just not a concern. I'm not going to get into all the data that supports that. I'm just not. It's out there. Look, you can Google things as good as I can. Get to know PubMed would be my first recommendation. But uh, find reliable sources, and once you find reliable sources, some of the more reliable people in the industry, then get their opinion on fruit. So, are there any fruits that you can eat and eat often and that you would enjoy? And the answer to that is 100% yes. Um, I've got six of them. Some of them you can eat really often. Some of them you can eat not quite so often. Um, Some of them are the most nutrient-packed fruits out there so yes if you're worried about this phytonutrient that you think you got to have phytonutrients there are some fruits you can work in occasionally to, you know if you want to obsess over phytonutrients which again i think that's pretty much been debunked that you need to stress about that too much so we'll start from the bottom of the list these are the ones you can have less frequently all the way up to the ones that you can have every day sound exciting let's do it bottom of the list is blueberries okay Blueberries. Now, blueberries are supposedly some of the most phytonutrient-packed fruits or or, or any food on the planet. All of the uh, serving sizes I'm going to talk about today is what, when you check labels anymore, pretty much 100 grams is a standard serving size of most things. And 100 grams is about three and a half ounces, okay? So that's the serving size. Now, if that confuses you, that tells me you're probably not weighing your food. If you're serious about losing weight, you need a scale at home that weighs things in ounces and grams. Go get one. They're relatively inexpensive, and they last forever. The one I'm using now, it's a nice digital scale. It does ounces. It does grams. It does milliliters. Uh, It's a digital scale. I bought it like four years ago. And I want to say it was in the $20 range or something. I got off Amazon. thing is still chugging along. Uh, it's sitting right on my counter in my kitchen. Uh, things that I know and have weighed out and know the portion size, I don't necessarily weigh that much anymore. But anytime I'm learning something new, I weigh it. So that puts all this into context. So everything I'm talking about is a 100 gram serving, okay? 100 gram serving or three and a half ounces. Blueberries. How many net carbs does it have? This is after you take the the uh, dietary fiber out. So this is and this is what you want to count after you. Now you need to go total carbs the first month to six weeks your keto, at least the first four weeks, preferably the first six. But after that you can move from total carbs to net carbs. And so net carbs is you're taking the carbs and you subtract the dietary fiber from it, and that only applies to real food. That doesn't apply to crazy concoctions that you bought from somebody. This is real food that grows on a tree or on a bush or something. Okay. So blueberries, 12 net carbs. Now, that's a lot of carbs for 100 grams. Now, you could have a half serving, 50 grams, and it'd be six, okay? So what did that, that'd be like 1. Uh, 1.7, 1.7 ounces. Not a lot of blueberries, but it's a, plenty of blueberries to work into to decent type keto recipes. Um, I don't I think it'd be pretty hard to work 100 grams in. If you if you're if you're doing 20 net carbs a day and you eat a whole 100 grams of blueberries, that's 12. That only leaves you eight net carbs the rest of the day. Pretty much you're going to need to be carnivore that day. <laughs> pretty much you're just going to want to eat steak or hamburger the rest of the day, and you might could work in some greens with the with your last meal to get to get your 20 net carbs. But nevertheless, you can work blueberries in. Strawberries and raspberries are the next two on the list, and they're tied at about six net carbs per 100 grams. Um, raspberries, uh, some people say it's an acquired taste. I actually like raspberries. 
Uh, strawberries as well. The problem with strawberries and stuff is people are used to eating it on things where they slam a bunch of extra sugar in it and turn it into like a syrup or something. Um, so I want to tell you that you can do that. One of my favorite things that I eat is um, full fat yogurt. So full fat yogurt, um, I can have a serving of that and it'll have about uh, three carbs, I think, three or four carbs for full fat yogurt and it's a really high fat content. And so one of my favorite toppings to put put on it is I'll take strawberries. <clears throat> Take some strawberries, uh, mush them up in a little bowl, you know, measure it out so you know how many carbs you're getting. And then there's a few different ways you can do it. But first of all, I put them in the microwave and heat them up so it starts breaking down. And then you can take um, powdered erythritol. You can take drops, the monk fruit stevia drops, or even stevia drops, I assume. And drop some of those in there for a little added sweetness. Heat it up, cook it down a little bit more, stir it up, and it'll turn into one of those syrupy topping type things that you were accustomed to in your old life. And so that's how I'll eat a strawberry. Um, I cook, cook it down, and, and uh, I actually buy something called um, allulose. And you can get allulose in the form of a syrup. And it's um, allulose actually is probably the lowest blood sugar uh, insulin impacting non-sugar sweetener i've found it's very expensive though super super expensive but if you want to try it you can buy it on amazon it's allulose and you can get it in the syrup form and i'll put like a like a teaspoon or tablespoon of that syrup in with the blueberries and cook that down and oh it's so thick and rich and sweet and uh has uh, nearly zero uh, impact on your blood sugar. Nevertheless, those two are tied, okay? Raspberries and strawberries at six grams. If you're taking notes, I'll recap for you at the end. So don't worry about it. I'll recap the carbs going through if you want to write them down so you don't have to look them up every time you want to eat something. So our top three are what's known as non-traditional fruits. You may not even think of these are fruits, but technically they are. But they are really low carb, and um, you can easily work these into your diet on a reasonable basis. So number three is tomato. Tomato is known as a nightshade. It's also technically a fruit. A lot of people have some issues with nightshade. I've known some people, uh, by the way, uh, mushrooms are a nightshade. There's several different things in this whole nightshade genre. But I've, I have found people who don't tolerate nightshade well from a losing weight standpoint, also from a health standpoint. So if that's you, you probably already know it. Otherwise, it's probably fine for you to eat tomato. You just can't get crazy with it. 100 grams of tomato is not a lot, okay? But 100 grams of tomato just has three net carbs. Three net carbs for 100 grams. That makes it very easy for you to eat something like um, tomato on... I don't know. Whatever you want to put tomato on. Generally, I don't eat it unless I'm making a low-carb uh, taco or something. It's generally where I'll eat tomato, uh, something like that. Nevertheless, um, it's good in uh, various type recipes, maybe something you've thought about cooking and have wondered about. So 100 grams of tomato is just three net carbs. Uh, number two on the list, this one is great because it has a ton of water in it. It has pretty decent nutrients in it. It's cucumber. And the thing I like about cucumber, which is three net carbs per 100 grams, three net carbs per 100 grams. The thing I like about cucumber, for me, it's a great way to get salt in my diet because I like to slice the cucumber into slices, dip it and, you know, pour me some salt on a little, uh, on, the, on the edge of the plate there and just dip the cucumber in the salt and eat it. Oh, it's so salty. And when you're on a ketogenic diet, getting salted is good. So cucumber is a really, really good one for me. Um... Number one on the list, and this is by far the best fruit, and for a lot of people on a keto diet, the only fruit they'll eat, because it's such low carb, but it's also something most fruits aren't. It's really high fat. It's low net carb, and it's really high fat, and that would be avocado. Now, I'm not a huge avocado fan. <laughs> I've tried eating avocado, and the only way I can eat avocado is to put it in a salad, and it kind of tastes like egg to me. I don't know if is that what everybody else is tasting? Because to me, it tastes like a, kind of like a boiled egg or something. I've tried to like avocado, and I just can't love it. But I can eat it in a salad. So if I eat avocado, I'll put it in a salad and uh, eat it that way. But only 1.5 net carbs per 100 grams. 1.5 net carbs per 100 grams. 
And when then when you consider the fat ratio, which is really high. Now, when you look at the, if you're going to go search, you want to do your own research and you look at avocado, you're going to see it has a lot of carbs. You're going to eat a lot. Avocado got, it got, it's got 12, uh, 12 carbs per serving. Well, it does have 12 carbs, but 10 of those are dietary fiber. Okay. Per serving, which I think is actually more than 100 grams when you look it up. Um, <clears throat> I think it's like 150 grams or something. The official, when you look it up, that I don't know why they use 150, but I've reduced it to the standard serving size for most things that you'll find is 100 gram serving sizes, which is three and a half ounces. So you know, it's it's going to show a lot of carbs, but most of all those are dietary fiber. Very little of it is any kind of sugar at all. So one and a half net carbs per 100 grams. And people like avocado in a lot of different ways. Now, while I don't like uh, uh, avocado, I do like guacamole, which is mostly avocado. So that's generally the way I'll get my avocado. I'll have avocado in a salad, or I'll figure out ways to eat uh, guacamole, and uh, which is basically avocado. It has some other things thrown in with it. But those are the fruits you can eat. That's the breakdown on them, so you know how to work them into your diet. If you don't have a scale, you need a scale. Otherwise, you don't know what 100 grams is. Um, but I'll recap the net. And these are net carbs, by the way. I'll recap them from bottom to top for you in case you want to take notes. Take notes starting now. Blueberries are 12. Strawberries and raspberries are 6. And then it's a big jump in difference to your non-traditional fruits. Tomato is 3. Cucumber is 3. And avocado is one and a half net carbs per 100 grams. I hope that helped you in some way. If it did, it'll probably help somebody else. Why don't you share it on your social media and let them get the knowledge that you were just privileged to. Don't be hogging all the knowledge. I wouldn't be where I'm at today with 125 pounds lost if somebody hadn't shared the knowledge. So you share the knowledge. We'll all be better for it. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on social media. Fat Guy Podcast is the username across all platforms. And um, subscribe to the podcast. If you know how to use Apple Podcast and the app that comes with your iPhone, and if you understand how to use whatever app comes with Android, whatever, we are in Apple Podcasts. We're in the Google Play Store. Just search for Fat Guy Podcast. If you don't understand any of that, you can download the Spreaker app. And the Spreaker app is free. And it doesn't just have my podcast. It has thousands of other podcasts on there. It's a great app. It's free. Download it. Once you download it, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, search for Fat Guy Podcast the heart button subscribe to the podcast and you will get updated about new episodes and you can scroll back and listen to all the old episodes and i appreciate you listening so much today have a great day we'll talk to you next time